Hello everyone, this is Derek with Reef Automation. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over the Hydros inputs. So as you can see, I am on the CoralView Hydros forward slash app on my browser. All of this is also done on the app on the phone and the tablet as well. So we're gonna go to inputs and we're gonna go to add. And this is where we would add an input. So let's call it test. So the first thing you need to do is say what kind of type it is. Now, there are multiple different inputs on the control four. You have the sense ports, the probe ports, and the zero to 10 inputs. And you can use them for a multitude of different things. So that's why you have to first choose what kind it is. So the first one we're gonna do is sense port. So we're gonna click sense port. You're then gonna say what kind of mode it is. Now it could be a temperature probe, a water level sensor, a skimmer water level sensor, a uh, flow rate sensor, a rope leak detector, a point leak detector. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what diagnostic is and TDS hasn't been released yet. Um, you then have to pick what sense port you wanna use. Now in this case, I'm already using a couple of sense ports, but if I had a couple more available, I would pick them here. It would also show you if you had multiple control fours or multiple control twos, which port you're using. So in this case, we're gonna call it a temperature probe. Now the safe range is going to alert you on your notification that you set below here, and that could be done via the yellow, orange, and red notifications. Now we're gonna have a video specifically on notifications, but that's how you set the particular notification for this particular sense port and this particular temperature probe. And this is your high and low uh, safe range. Offset is if you wanted to offset the amount on the temperature, if it's possibly off by a degree or off by negative two degrees, this is where you would set the offset for that particular temperature probe. Next one is water level. Very simple, you just click water level and you give it the, what port you want that to be. Next one, skimmer water level, same thing. It just has a different label. Uh, again, it's based off of what you label it up here, but this will come up first on your skimmer water. Flow rate sensor, uh, pretty simple. You just pick which flow rate sensor you're using and uh, which port you're using. Rope leak sensor, uh, same thing, except for there is a sensitivity here. So you could actually adjust how much water you want that to sense. If you want it to sense just a drip or you want it to sense a puddle and that's where the trigger threshold is. And of course there's a notification and what kind of notification level you want that rope leaks the sensor to be. Point leak to sensor is not going to be a rope leak sensor. It does not have a sensitivity. If it gets water, it's just going to go off. Again, I'm not sure what diagnosis is. Um, must be something maybe in the future and the same thing with TDS. Uh, there's nothing you can do with those two as at this time, but uh, I'm sure that'll be something in the future. So probe ports, um, you have a couple different probes. Currently you have the pH, ORP, and the alkalinity. The alkalinity um, comes from a device that can provide alkalinity through the pH port. Um, you can hook up an alkatronic through the pH port to do this. Again, we're going to show you how to do it through the alkatronic uh, sign in, which is a lot easier, but you can have an ORP probe, you can have a pH probe currently, and those are the two probes that are supported by the device. Um, your low and your high. The temperature, if you want to do temperature compensation, um, this is also where you would calibrate it. So you would hit recalibrate, and this is where you would calibrate it right here. Um, notifications based off of the safe uh, high and low range as we went over. ORP does the same thing. Uh, you tell what probe port you wanted to do. Um, this is where you would do an offset if, I don't know, you had a uh, packet of 400 um, that you can purchase from Pinpoint. You can actually uh, see if your offset or your probe is not correct. There's no real calibration here. Um, that is the calibration. So that's ORP. Next, uh, we're gonna skip that for a second. Uh, we're gonna go to Alcatronic. Very simple, you just connect to Focustronic here, putting your username and password, and that is it. Very easy. So zero to 10 volt input is one of the, I think the, the coolest or best features that the Hydros provides you. Now, the C4 gives you four inputs. Again, you can have many, but this is where you would select a button. 
Now, um, depending on your button, you can actually uh, set specific resistors on that button to a specific amount of voltage that it's getting from that particular button. So you can have multiple buttons with multiple different resistors to give you a different voltage. And you can actually set the trigger voltage right here. So that's pretty neat. Um, the, event, the event duration, um, essentially, you're not going to really do much with this, but that's if you wanted to mimic a press and hold on the button, which you're going to do yourself. Um, on the second press, uh, you can actually have it as a double press. So, for instance, if you pressed it once, it's going to do one thing. If you press it again, it's going to do something else. And that's what the restart event and the end event are for. Switch. Uh, generally, a switch is going to be always on or always off. Again, you can do uh, voltage ranges there. When it's inside or outside the range, depending on your switch and depending on what resistor, um, Again, there's a number of different things here. You could do leak detectors, generic, um, on and off, open or closed. Um, this, again, is meant for the, the programming of your outputs, what you want this particular switch to be, either an on or, open, uh, an on or off to tell you if it's on or off, either it's open or closed. And again, this is just for labeling purposes. Um, the notification is going to be used for if it's in or with it, if it's inside or outside the range that you've produced from the switch um, I don't know how much you'll use that but uh, that's a neat feature the analog is really cool so the analog actually will um, receive a value between 1 and 100 percent and therefore do something based off of that analog value um, now there's a couple devices out there that produce that information. Generally, it comes from like a Raspberry Pi or possibly a board that provides data information. Um, you can have the offset again, uh, your data type. What kind of type is it? Is it coming in as a temperature? Is it coming in as alkalinity? Is it coming in as a flow rate? And you can pick what kind of information is coming in from that analog value, which is really, really interesting. Um, this gets into the more advanced, but uh, as you can see, it could be very um, neat to do a couple different programming uh, based off of analog values coming in. So that's your uh, 0 to 10 input, and like I said, that's your Alcatronic. And that's uh, all the inputs that the Hydros currently supports. Um, and if you go up to your navigation mode and your status here, this is where you can actually put uh, what you want to see off of your ports here. That would be in the input section. You can add and subtract them right here. Um, we only have a couple things hooked up right now. We have a temp sensor. We have um, a leak detector. Nothing crazy. But this is where you can actually add them and subtract them to see what's going on with them uh, in this section here. So hopefully this video was useful and hopefully you learned a little bit about the Hydros. Uh, hopefully you liked the video and if you did go ahead and subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.